Well, here's the start of New York to a show, the new Range Rover Sport. Um, introduced last night, Daniel Craig drove it into town. Uh, big change for this car uh, because it's an all aluminium car. It's had a dramatic loss of weight, 420 kilos they're talking about. And it's a completely different car to the previous Range Rover Sport. It almost ought to have a different name. Now, I'm going to take you around some of the details on this car that really make it so different. First of all, it's a stretched wheelbase, seven inches extra in the wheelbase. So there's way more space in Side. There's a real hint of evoke about this car, um, especially from the rear. The one, one of the aspects I'm not quite so sure about, this is the supercharged version, so 510 horsepower. And yet it looks a bit weedy around those exhaust pipes. I'm very surprised at how that looks. Um, but overall, I think it's a great design. Really huge doors on it. It's something that you do note on this car. It's very easy to get in and out. But whoa, look at the size of that door. It's like, a, it's like a barn door, but there's much more space than there ever used to be. Uh, in the back, they call this a um, five-seater. Well, I don't really want the middle seat, but what's nice is it's a full-size seat with a headrest, rather than having that funny headrest. You used to get it in a Range Rover Sport, and you used to dig into your back. Not on this model. Um, so it's a proper five-seater. The other thing uh, I quite like about it is on the option list, there is a two-seater, uh, sorry, third row of seats. 1,500 pounds buys you these emergency seats in the back. Flick up a touch of a button. A really nice touch to have a five-plus-two seating option like that. Style, I think it, it, I think it is one of the best designs we've seen of this sort of genre of car. Um, we sort of got used to this new look of uh, Land Rover with the Evoque, uh, but this drags it on to another level. Yeah. Now, inside, what's different to this, to the uh, full fat Range Rover, is a higher console. Um, step inside, oh, well, there we go. Um, if you see here, it's got an LCD dash and the center screen, just like on the full-size Range Rover. And also this, a gear change, rather than that funny rotary knob. Welcome return to have that, I think, in the car. And you get uh, paddles behind the wheel to change gear on the eight-speed gearbox. Again, emphasizing how different this car is to um, the other Range Rovers in the range. You, there is um, standard option is a single speed transfer gearbox. What am I talking about? We well, haven't got the low and high range that used to get in Range Rovers for ultimate off road ability. This one is the first Range or Land Rover project I know where it hasn't got that on the bigger cars. Yes, you've got it in Vogue, sorry, you've got a single speed one there. But on this, it's all about um, its on road ability. And the single speed transfer gear case means there's 58% power goes to the rear, 42 to the front, rather than a normal 50 50 split. And the supercharged one, this car, they're talking under five seconds to 60, uh, top speed limited to 155 miles an hour. And they're even talking about lap times. I had a call from one of the engineers, they're around 8.32 around the North Life at the moment with the supercharged car. That's the sort of speed that a KN uh, Turbo was doing two, three years ago. So this car is generally gonna compete dynamically, they're telling me, uh, with that of a Porsche KN, which, the previous one never did because he was so overweight. Um, it was like it was like Isobard uh, Kingdom uh, Brunel sort of designed it or something, but uh, he was so so heavy. So it's great that it's it's competitive now at about 2.1 tons instead of 2,085. For Some of the options you get on this car discuss the um, rear flip seats. Another one is the panoramic roof. The glass roof has proved a hugely popular uh, on the full-size Range Rover and on the Evoque. I'm sure it's going to be equally the same on this one. Strangely, the LCD dash is another area that is an option. Um, normally you get analog dials there, but I'm sure people will go for this. And also on this car, they're introducing a... Is that going to work? Oh, there we go. Yeah, so that's, that is going to be an option, the LCD uh, screens, and it's all configurable and you press sport and then it all goes turns red and you know, super sporty. Um, you get an app with this one on your iPhone where you can check remotely how much fuel you've got in your car, what sort of range you've got, even where you parked it, it's got a sort of tracker on it, so you can, if you're, if you're out in town and you've gone walking about and you don't know where you parked, press that and it'll give you the quickest way back to the car. All sort of clever stuff that we're sort of seeing on this car, but it's been introduced for this one. There's even a uh, Wi-Fi hotspot in here. It takes up to eight devices. It only seats seven, so I don't know why you want eight devices, but anyway, it's better than everybody else. Um, the model for Europe is bound to be the diesel, um, V6 uh, diesel, 
there's a 258 horsepower one and a 292 horsepower one. I find this, the uh, claim acceleration pretty remarkable. 6.9 seconds for the SD V6. V um, Starting price 51,550. So it hasn't had this jump in price that we saw with the with the big Range Rover that was significantly more expensive than the model it replaced. This one's about 2,000 pounds more than the outgoing model. So it all sort of adds up. I think this is going to be a bit of a hit in the showroom. I think they're going to be in short supply and, and depreciation. It isn't going to be a problem the first few years because it just sort of feels right. It feels a useful car and the added sort of dynamics that we've not come to expect from Range Rover Sport. This is going to be on another level. So yeah, here we go again. It's evoke time, times two.